All right, good afternoon and welcome to Mass Atoka online class. Okay, this is continuation of um, uh, electric field, electric field we did. So if you have not watched the first video, please watch it before this particular one, right? And if today is your first day of watching our video, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we drop a beautiful video like this, you'll be notified by YouTube, All right? Now, if you look at this question, it's very simple. They gave us this and said, a watermelon of mass, they gave us the mass of this watermelon, is suspended on a uniform rod of mass, 4 kg, and long, right? And 4 meter long, sorry. And 4 meter long, 4 meter, right? And 4 meter long, okay? As illustrated in the diagram above, if the rod is at equilibrium by the action of the force between the charges Q plus Q, positive Q and negative Q, then calculate the anti-clockwise moment. Now, don't forget that um, according to equilibrium, this one moving like this is clockwise moment. This, okay? These are, everything is acting on this particular knife edge. Okay? Uh, sorry. Let me say, there is a force here. There is a force here, F. And this force is the uh, a, a electric force, electrostatic force, okay, of attraction. Electro uh, electrostatic force of attraction between these two charges is being acted here so this force is equally acting on this knife edge and if you see that clock clock is moving like this so if you look at this one which one is moving the way clock is moving so this one is clockwise is moving like this the way clock is moving this one is equally another clockwise why this one is what anti-clockwise so the only anti-clockwise moment is this one so we tell them that uh, let's call this the first force can we call it f uh the first force let me just call it force of the watermelon uh force of watermelon let me call it f1 please permit me and force is what mg okay which is what five times ten which is what 50 newton all right so now i know that uh, moment is force times distance don't forget so anti anti-clockwise moment anti-clockwise moment anti-clockwise moment is equal to what force times the distance which is what the force there is 50 times what's the distance the distance from this force to this knife edge is just from here to here which is one meter okay so that is 50 times one which is what 50 right that is newton meter right so that is the clockwise moment so the second question there said we should calculate calculate charge now for us to calculate the charge we need to get the force that is being act, the force of attraction between these two charges. Okay? So how do we get the force of attraction between two, these two charges? We tell them that what? Anti-clockwise moment is equal to what? Clockwise moment. So for anti-clockwise, from here times this. That is, let me call this F1. This is F1. Let me call this one F2. Okay? So to get our F2, don't forget, to get our F2 is Tmg, which is what? 4 times 10, which is what? 40 newton okay so we tell them that what f1 times the distance it moved from here to that knife edge which is one okay is equal to that is the only anti-clockwise moment but for clockwise moment is four times this but it's not four that is f2 f2 times what the distance and the distance is equally one okay plus let me call this okay this one i've already called it fe fe is another clockwise times is acting from here to here and don't forget that don't forget that uh, if from here to here is four all right and from here to here is already two which means from here to here from here to here is another two in fact without even being told you should know that what that the mass of a rod of a uniform rod is always acting on the center so this is the mass four kg acting on this center so from here to here is two and from here to here is two obviously okay so let's get that our f1 our f1 we have gotten it to be 50 so i have 50 times one is equal to our f2 40 times one times and the distance here is from here from this fe to this knife edge which is from here to here two plus another one which is three so i have what one plus two you get that so what do we have? Our Fe, our Fe is what we are looking for. Our Fe is what we are looking for times 3. All right. So what do we have here now? 50 is equal to what? 40 times 3 Fe. 
So therefore, this one can move here. So we have 50 minus 40 is equal to 3Fe. So Fe is equal to 10 divided by 3. And 10 divided by 3 will give you 3.33 Newton. 3.33 Newton. So this is the force of attraction between these two charges. Then I can now use the normal formula I know to get my G. Okay? To get my G, I will tell them that what? That the force of attraction between the two charges is equal to what? K, G, uh, squared. Because they are the same. G squared all over what? R squared. So what's the distance apart? They've given us that the distance apart R is 2.5. That is the distance between this and this. So I'll have that what? My F, I've gotten it to be, well, let me use the same 10 over 3. Okay? 10 over 3 is equal to what? 9.0 times 10 raised to the power 9. Please, there is a mistake I made in the, in the other video. Please correct it. The, the, the charge of electron and proton is 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 and not minus 12. Please correct it. 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. Okay, that is the charge. I just remembered it now. So, um, times my Q squared all over. The distance apart is 2.5. So, I have 2.5 all squared so if you cross multiply we will now have that q squared is equal to this one will go here this one will come down so i have 10 times 2.5 all squared now divided by 9.0 times 10 raised to the power 9 so you now have that you now have that your q will now be the square root of if you do everything here you'll be getting a uh, you'll be getting 2.3 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 so my q we will now be, uh, do that. You have 4.81 times 10 raised to the power what? Minus 5 column. So that is my, my charge. And it's very, very simple question. All right? Okay? So we move. So the next question we're going to answer. The next one said. So now, let's talk about, let's talk about resultant. Resultant. Resultant force on charges. Resultant force on charges. Resultant force on charges. All right. So now, all right. When charges, when three charges are distributed such that each center such that their centers from the from the vertices of a tri sorry right when three charges are distributed such that their centers form the vertices of a of a triangle then the resultant the resultant force on any one of them can be obtained by means of vector addition or resultant so if you have a charge like this, moving this way, another charge like this, and this one like this, then this one like this, okay? And then we have an angle here, alpha, and here is my R3 plus Q1, R2, R1, minus Q two minus q three okay this one is negative moving like this this one is positive moving like this this one is uh, uh negative because it came down All right so we have this so we're going to see that uh this is being represented in magnitude and direction like vector so if you want to draw the triangle very well we have that we have this one like this and then this one like this and then this is a positive Q, and this is the force. The force is F2, okay? And then, uh, this is the theta. Mm, sorry. We now have that this one is F3, and then we have this, and then we have this. So, the resultant always passes through the middle. It passes through the middle. And this time around, they said that the theta is with the vertical and not with the horizontal. So you trace this down and then you trace this down. Okay. So that is that. So the only thing you need to know 
is that uh, you don't need to waste your time. So you have that here. Let me here is equally f2. Okay, you don't need to waste your time that the f, the resultant f, is simply f squared is equal to what? f1 squared plus what? f2 squared. If there are three, plus f3 squared, and so on and so forth. All right? So that is how to get your resultant. Then the angle, don't forget that word, okay? Let me use two. Then the angle is equal to what? That tan theta is equal to what? y over x. So the one in y, which is f3, that is in y, all over the one in x, that is f2. All right, so theta will now be what? The tan inverse of that. Tan inverse of F3 over F2. All right? So that is that. Okay, so this is opposite over adjacent. Sorry, F2. This one is... Uh, why did they use this? Uh, this is... I don't think this is correct anyways. Okay, that is if the angle is here anyways. But sometimes the angle is always here. So it depends on where your angle is. Yeah? So let's assume that my own angle is here. Okay? Let's assume that my own angle is here. With the horizontal. So that the angle will not equally be here. Please. Let the angle be with the horizontal. So this is now correct. Y over X. Uh, please. This Y over X is when the angle is with the horizontal. Please. Make sure that your own angle is with the horizontal. So as simple as that. So let's take a question on that to illustrate what we are saying. But before that, we have another one. We have another one like this. So if we have another one like this. We have another one like this. We have that here is theta. Here is alpha. And then there is a trace down here. So I have 90 degrees. Here is another theta. And then we have a straight line here. You see that here is theta as well. And here is another theta. Okay. And here is F1. F2. This is uh, minus 2Q plus 2Q. Here is my R. Here is plus Q. Okay. So we have that um, that plus Q is repaired from plus 2Q with a force of F1. Okay. So this is positive, positive. So it does not come this way. It was repaired. Okay. But the other one was attracted because it is negative. Okay. Then we now have that um, in this one, what we have is that our F the resultant force for this type is your F1 cos theta, F1 cos theta, okay, plus F2 cos theta as well for X2 cos theta. Or simply say F1 plus F2, then all multiplied by what? By cos theta. So that is how we do that. F1, F2 cos theta, right? So that is that. So, but from the diagram, we equally have that cos theta, cos theta is equal to what? Half D over what? Over R. Half D over R. Okay? Cos theta is equal to half D over R. You know that this is, if you divide this into two, from here to here being your distance. So, if from here to here is your distance. From here to here is your distance. So half of it. So here is half D. Half D. And here is my R. If here is R, here is R. So here is equal to my half D. Okay? So you see that what? That cos theta is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So half D over R. So if you compare this, you will now have that. Um, so this is now cos theta is equal to D. D over 2R. D over 2R. If your 2 comes down. Alright? So when we start solving question you will understand better what we are trying to explain. Okay? So let's take some questions to illustrate that. So the first question we are going to take... So the first question we are going to say that... Um, Okay.
Okay, look at the first question. They said in the diagram, in the diagram below, or oh, sorry, the diagram below, the diagram below illustrates two collinear electric charges. of magnitude plus q and minus q all right then i said the charge the charges are equidistance from a point p at which a rest charge the rest charge is placed the nan gave us this you answer that here is minus q and here is positive q okay and this is the point p all right Okay.